Beatrice Gisho is the Deputy Commissioner in charge of corporate data in strategy, innovation, and knowledge management. A round of applause for Ashley comes up. Thank you so much. Right next to him, Asante Sana. She is a Deputy Commissioner, Corporate Data Office at the Kenya Revenue Authority. And then I'd like to call upon now the moderator for this session, Professor Bitangen Demo, the Professor of Entrepreneurship at the University of Nairobi and Chairperson, Distributed Ledgers and Artificial Intelligence Task Force. I believe, Professor, your seat may be over here as the moderator. And then this session, this session will have two keynote speakers. Yeah? The first one who I'd like to call upon the stage is Mr. Stephen Shege. He's the Chief Corporate Affairs Officer at Safaricom P. Safaricom, of course, we all know Safaricom, right? A round of applause for him as he comes up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Mr. Stephen has a background in regulatory and legal affairs. Also, his department provides strategic support functions for Safaricom operations. He's an advocate of the High Court as well. Come this way. You'll be the first one to give an address right now. And also a telecommunications and public policy expert from the industry. He's the first one who will give a keynote address. The next keynote address will be given by Mrs. Elizabeth Mayo, Commissioner of Domestic Taxes from the Kenya Revenue Authority. She'll, I'll call upon her right after Stephen is done. Then they'll all sit on the panel and Professor Bitangendemo will take over from there. So Miss Elizabeth, just stay there. Once Stephen is done, then I'll call upon you, all right? Steve, thank you. That was good. <laughs> is this on? Okay. So good afternoon. Um, I have to read some salutations here, and I'm very happy to note that some of the people I'll be mentioning are actually here. Sometimes you read these things and those people are not even in the room. So, <laughs> KRA Commissioner Domestic Taxes, Mrs. Elizabeth Mayo. Um, our session moderator, Professor Ndemo. Uh, MD of Kenya Breweries, Jen Karuku. Chairman of NCBA, uh, Mr. Isaac Awondo. CEO of Kraft Silicon, Mr. Kamal Budabati, Deputy Commissioner of Corporate Data Office, Beatrice Kishohi, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Um, I hope everyone is happy now. <clears throat> so let me get started. Uh, I was told I have a very short time, and uh, in that short time, I'm not going to say anything uh, spectacularly you know, uh, different that um, we haven't thought about or KRA is not doing. But when I was preparing for this presentation, I asked myself, technology is so wide, and as a company that has been able to leverage it to a very good extent, we've been able to solve a lot of problems for Kenyans, and in that sense, uh, earn a lot of value. If we were at KRA, um, <clears throat> what would we do? Or what would we ask KRA to do differently, or think differently, so that they can leverage technology to get to their targets? We know that each year KRA has higher and higher tax targets. And so in the next few minutes, because I was told to, to reduce the time I'll take, I'll just cover some of those topics. Do we have some slides? Ah, OK. Good. So my first slide is something we are all still very happy about. Who is not happy about uh, Kipchoge? In fact, I should say, who is happy so that we see the hands that are not down? <laughs> yeah? um, the point I want to make with this is that technology has changed. We all saw this incredible human feat live on Saturday morning because of technology. We were not alone in this. We were together with large sections of humanity, all the way from the East Coast in America, West Coast, China, all of Africa, and I think all of Europe was awake the whole night waiting for this thing. So technology is a powerful tool which we all acknowledge, and it has come, become very ubiquitous uh, for us, and we almost take it for granted. Of course, a lot of work goes in behind the scenes by companies like us to make it all work. But the question becomes, how quickly and how easily can an authority like Kerry make use of this technology to leverage its positions? The message that we want to share first is that digitization works. 
it sounds like a truism, it sounds like something that should be you know, uh, accepted by everyone, but it actually works. And what do I mean by digitization? Over the last almost 50 years, when we have had the internet, it has changed how we do everything, literally. From how we dress, uh, how we shop, how we access healthcare, uh, the kind of knowledge that we have. Uh, nowadays, you can't keep up with your kids because they know more than you, because they can just Google it and the information is there. Uh, in our time, there used to be those smart guys in class, and they're only smart because they had some books which you didn't have, you know? So now information is diversified, it's common, it's well distributed, and the internet has changed how we do things. To complete many transactions now, you don't even need to interact with the party that you're dealing with. I can sit here and book a plane ticket, um, and over the weekend I'm in Dubai. I don't need to talk to anyone. Same thing with the accommodation I will use over there. So we have to acknowledge the power of the internet and the power of digitization. To bring it closer to home, KRA went one step in this direction, uh, and here I'm giving KRA a strong B. Uh, we want KRA to move to A, <laughs> like a good student. They took one very important direction in this regard and created the iTax portal. That's a very important tool that has started, I believe, their journey to digitization. Through this portal, I can sit in my office and be able to do my taxes. However, they would be getting an A if they continued with that journey and actually did some digitization. What do I mean by that? The way we access information nowadays is entirely almost through apps. There's an app that helps you to do different things. There's an app that tells you what your friends are saying. There's an app that tells you, you know, it's time to exercise. There's an app that tells you so many things. And we also have a Safaricom app. Please use it to send them PESA and other things. But anyway, it's, it's a language of apps. Kerry has not continued and harnessed the power of this. Apps do two things, and they're really difficult things. They are ubiquitous. You download them every day, you don't like it, you delete it. But there's a lot of work that goes into creating an app. Why? Because the app makes it easy for your customers to interact with you. So the thought process that goes into creating the channels is what is, um, I would say, missing from how KRA is currently um, harnessing digitization. If we had an app that I could download and pay my um, tax, for example, let's say I have a rental property, the likelihood of compliance will go up. We have seen how our customers consume services based on how they download apps. We actually see their usage of data going up, and we're able to see them loading and loading more because they have moved to that environment. So this is an opportunity which is very clear to us that KRA must consider very quickly and urgently. Um, if you look at the facts out there, there are over 2.8 million apps in the Google Play Store. People are downloading 200 million apps a day. So obviously, we're all downloading the same apps, but all over the world, yeah? This is the new language of how things are done now. In the Apple Play Store, we're talking about 2.2 million apps. It just reinforces um, what I'm saying, the fact that digitization has now taken an angle. And if you're not taking that angle, you're sort of staying behind. I'll come to the simplification process in a bit more uh, detail. So in the short time that I have, digitization works. Kamal Budabati will even go into detail around this through Craft Silicon. He's done some great work there, which, uh, some of which we've collaborated. Digitization is a continuous process. Carry goes to a good place. It's not the time to stop. You need to actually keep the energy and move to the next place because there's a customer who wants to comply. There's a customer who feels, I can do this. But if they go to the website, first they have to put a 14-digit PIN number. They have to do some maths there and get it right. Otherwise, they're not going into the portal. Once they get in, there's just a very large array of things they have to mine through to, to, to get to what they want to do. I just want to pay my rent tax. There should be some place I click over there. I say, this is the gross that I'm getting. You take your 10%, which I pay by M-Pesa or by bank, and that's it. Now I have to have someone from KRA, and I'm being very honest with you, I have a friend in KRA. 
<laughs> who helps uh, with tax returns and things like that. Simplification. Uh, I can share a few examples also of organizations that have taken this route and gone to technology to help them increase their tax collections or their, their, their revenue collections. What is NTSA? So we partnered with NTSA in 2005, uh, 2015. At 2015, NTSA was collecting 100 million shillings every year, which was great. But after we digitized the process, which means you can now sit at your desk, register your car, update your driving license and all these things, they're now doing 200 million shillings a month. That's a power of harnessing technology. Why? Because everyone seated wherever they are and through the right interfaces are able to do the things that matter to them conveniently while at the same time paying whatever they're supposed to pay for the service. This is an example which is, uh, cannot be ignored. Safaricom today has partnered with 43 out of our 47 counties for cashless payments. What we mean by this is that these counties have sat down with us and we have devised ways where 99% of their payments can be made through mobile money. Because of that, all these counties are experiencing a 30% increment in revenue collection. We're currently running a pilot of five streams, including parking markets, quarry, business permits, re and renewals uh, with the county of uh, Kiambu. Our county here in Nairobi has already reported a 30% revenue increase between 2014 and 2016 by merely moving some, not all, some of its services uh, to a digital platform. <coughs> so, the other upside of using these payment methods is that data is created. And that data, as is being said in the fourth industrial revolution, is more important than, than, than oil or gold. That data is what will tell you the behavior of a particular customer in compliance and their readiness to pay the next tax that you come up with. So that data in itself that is uh, being generated is very important and would be something which the KRA uh, would, would benefit from. And obviously we are doing our part as a platform to uh, help these counties um, uh, achieve the Big Four agenda and what the counties have set out to, to achieve, the respective counties. The other thing which I want to talk about very quickly is about innovating to solve a problem. Again, nothing you haven't had before, but if you do it from a strategic perspective, it actually pays huge dividends. Let me give you an example of us in Safaricom. Every single day, we approach uh, issues by saying, what is the pain point? And how can we make that pain point disappear? If you solve that problem, two things tend to happen. One, there's relevance. Relevance is what keeps you going. If you're doing things which people are not interested in, no one cares, and you know, you're just uh, left behind. Second, there's a premium. You get paid for solving a particular problem. I could give the example of a service called Fuliza. I know some of you are Fulizard today. <laughs> uh, Fuliza came up from us sitting down and saying, hang on, I'm trying to send money to someone. I don't have enough money, then I cancel the transaction. What we tended to see is that later on, that person loaded the amount that they needed and still made the transaction possible. So maybe you are just absent-minded. Your, your, your wife or whoever asks you for 5,000 shillings, and you have 4,800. So you try to send 5,000, it doesn't go. You wait until the evening, you top up, and then you send her the money. We said, what if this amount was just advanced to you, the 200, complete your transaction, and then you know, later on when you top up, we recover the same amount. It goes back to the, uh, to the port. And that's what we did. We created a platform that is able to use data and know how people operate, the kind of people who can be adverse different kind of uh, values, and collaborated with uh, now NCBA and, um, <coughs> and uh, KCB to come up with this product. To date, that particular service has dispersed over 135 billion shillings. It was launched in January this year. That tells you there was a need there's a problem that needed to be solved, and we went in there and we solved it. So let me go back to KRA. I've already given the example of uh, someone trying to pay 
their land rent. There has to be a process simplification that allows people to comply easily. If people can comply easily, the uptake will be there. But let me deal with a different problem which we feel you have. The problem is there are too few people paying taxes in this country. Too few people paying taxes. And I'm not saying we are feeling, but I'm saying it is said that those people are feeling the pinch. Yeah? Because KRA is drilling deeper into them. The way we would look at this is the first problem is you need to widen your tax base. And you need to start a way of targeting cash-rich industries that are now not fully subjected to tax. And the way to do this is to ensure those industries are digitized. They are actually subjected to the uh, wave of technology. Because that will give you data, who is earning what, when, how much, and who is paying taxes or not paying taxes. Um, I'm just using an example here. I don't want to be lynched by anyone. Um, take, for example, the transport uh, sector. And uh, I mean the commuter transport sector. Um, on average, every day, one matatu will collect how much? You really don't know. Yeah? In a week, it will collect how much? You really don't know. How can we allow ourselves to run a country where a huge section of our transport sector is in that industry, and we simply don't know in the 21st century. This data must be available. And it could be available if such industries are targeted to switch over to a technology platform so that payments are predictable. You know how many people are traveling uh, in certain routes. It will even go into planning and tell you where you need expansion and things like that. But more importantly, it will bring a new set of people into the tax bracket and also lighten the load for the people who are currently paying tax. Kerry will not reach its targets, its ever-growing targets uh, for tax by going after the same people who are paying taxes. It must look for ways to expand its horizons. I had two more examples, but I need to, to move on. Now, the elephant in the room, how do you get information about people's taxes? Uh, <clears throat> you can see that headline there. It's, uh, I remember it very well. Um, if you Google that uh, headline, the person saying that is me. Um, and, and I asked the team to put that uh, there because I wanted to have a conversation. That time the KRA had unilaterally woken up and said, we're going to access your M-Pesa accounts to make you pay taxes. That was three years ago. And I had to come out and say, that's not going to happen. Because that data is data that is private to our customers. And there's no linkage between how it can come from us to go to a government body. The point we want to make here is there's a huge opportunity for work to be done in the policy space to make KRA capable of accessing some of this information. To date, I still get letters on my desk saying, for this merchant, pay bill number X, we want all his details. And I look at it and I call the same people I've called before and I say, you know, I cannot do this. Yeah, get a court order or go and change the law. But I'm not able to comply with this kind of thing. So there's a layer of policy work that KRA must actually take upon itself and say, what is the most important asset that is growing? I think it's data. How do we legally get access to this data? without putting a lot of pressure on people like us so that we look like we are not helping, we become just someone who is subject to the law. Yeah? There's a lot of work that needs to be done in this area because even globally, where this information is being used for planning, this information is being used for increasing revenues, those bodies have devised ways of actually legally getting that information. In a way, I'm also saying, please stop sending us those letters, you know? <laughs> We don't want to be in a, have bad relationships. Go and solve the bigger problem. Yeah? And please, uh, I can see the board members are here. Don't put the pressure on the teams to deliver the numbers if the systemic issues have not been dealt with. Because they will come and meet uh, people like us who will tell them, if I give you this, I'll be sued by whoever it is uh, the data is from. So we want to help, we need to help, but more thinking needs to be done at a strategic uh, level 
uh, to address this issue. The fact is there's a lot of growth in consumer awareness in this country. In fact, the language that is being used now, the, the, the newspaper equivalent of this two days ago was that KRA is spying on, on people's bank accounts. By the time an editor uses a word like spying, it speaks to the tension between people wanting to keep the information private and the need for the KRA to maybe access that information. There should be a better way and more systematic way of getting access to that information. And with some effort and diligence, we think this uh, can be done. Um, I think I'll move very fast now. Uh, the, the next thing I want to talk about is we have to progress together. Again, very obvious, but this is what I mean by this. And I have a very good example seated with us today. Uh, Kamal. Kamal is many things. He's a, he's, he's a tech genius. He's an entrepreneur. But he's also the guy behind a company called Little. Little was a little company, if you allow me to say it that way. But when we partnered with Little as Safaricom, Little became a big, you know, buzzword all over. Mm -hmm. And now we were chatting uh, before this session and he told me they are now in four countries and growing. Partnerships really, really help. And partnerships work in this way. You cannot know everything on your own. Even us as Safaricom, we don't invent anything anymore on our own. What we do, we've created a platform and we're inviting uh, external companies, in, using the example of Little, to come and work with us. KRA must use this kind of sessions, and we're happy to be here, to actually reach out and mine these ideas from different people, and then follow up with them and say, you said this, or the other one said that. How do we actually make this something that can become a real thing? Partnerships also allow you to get the benefit of the R&D or the data that some uh, other organizations have. Because we have like a, a lot of data, like Safaricom, and we can be able to give some insights, without disclosing the data obviously, some insights that could help you take a particular path as a regulator. So for us, uh, our participation has always been direct with the KRA. And I know even this week, there was a meeting with KEPSA on Monday. And we gave our views, and we're ready to give our views. And more recently, the KRA has um, issued an EOI on how uh, private companies like ourselves can work with them to be able to generate more revenue from new technologies that are now being used. And we have participated in that. And even when we did, it was a bit difficult for us because it's like doing an exam where the question set is not clear. But, you know, you try and give an answer so that together between you and the examiner, some knowledge, <laughs> some knowledge has been shared. That is important and is the right path. And we have to give kudos where kudos is deserved. And that is an area where KRA is doing the right thing now. While it is doing that, it should also ensure that it is having the policy discussion that we mentioned earlier. It is innovating around the problem, and it is digitizing. So given the time that I have, that is all I have to share this afternoon. Thank you. All right. A round of applause for Mr. Stephen Chege. I'd like to call upon Mrs. Elizabeth Mayo. She's the Commissioner, <laughs> Domestic Taxes at the Kenya Revenue Authority. We'll see if she accepts the strong B or she's going to contest it. A round of applause for her, she comes up. Thank you so much. It's an A. A handshake with an A. <laughs> Once more, good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Yeah, what I'd like to tell Safaricom that it's an A. <laughs> it's not a B. We don't accept Bs in KRA because a B means we have not met the target. And our commitment in the year 20. 19, 2020 is that KRA will meet and surpass its target. I have my directors here. This is the commitment I'm giving. And with all that you have said, the B is there as the score you've given, but ours is an A. And with, your, with the partnership with Safaricom and other stakeholders, we'll be able to achieve what we want. Next. Please move to the next slide. Do I have that thing? Oh, sorry. Yeah. So I'd like to start with this slide. 
on digital economy. So when you look at that slide, what I'm simply trying to say is that the digital technology spreads through the entire economy. It's not only in taxation. So when we look at tourism, there is disruption everywhere. We have moved from the conventional way we used to work, the way we used to handle things, to the new ways of handling things through innovative ways. So under tourism, we have nowadays the issue of Airbnb. You might be having a three-bedroomed house, and it's only the two of you, you and your husband, you have an extra room. You can generate revenue from that. How will KRA know that? We have booking.com. I don't have to call any hotel now, even if I'm going to the US. I will only go to the platform and book reserve for the hotel, pay for it when I'm in Kenya. When I go there, I simply do what? Check in and take my room. The next one is the industry. When we look at our manufacturing sector now, there is serious, serious disruption. There is serious disruption. Things are moving from the normal conventional way to online. I will be seated in my house, and I simply make a, an order, and the delivery will be done. So that one even cuts costs, which is an input we should be going into the cost of sales for that uh, industry. Education and training. We have very many people now who never used to have access or time to go to class. We have e-learning. Where is our principal? The principal there has come up with a campus on e-learning. And the reason why he did that was to have an outreach, reach as many people as possible. We have city and mobility. From here, I believe many of you who left their vehicles even in uh, Upper Hill, you'll simply call Uber. A vehicle will pick you from here. You really don't have to suffer. You don't have to go and squeeze yourself in a matatu. You'll simply call for it, and the vehicle will come. In terms of sending even parcels, we have platforms for companies like Sandy. I will buy goods here. I simply give it to somebody who will deliver it in my house. The other day I went to the salon and I was shocked that the lady at the salon told me, which weave do you want? And when I told her, she simply called and said, it will be delivered here. Who will deliver it? Somebody in a motorbike. So the world has totally changed, the disruption is there. But what attracts Kare, what attracts Mrs. Mayo is, how do I tax that transaction? I have to tax it. Because if I don't tax it, I will stick at B. And I want to move from B to A. And Safaricom did not tell me how I will be moving from B to A. And I think that is a discussion we'll take after this. Agriculture, the same. We have what is M Farm, a platform through which I will be I'm a farmer I'm in Nairobi, but I'm managing my farm in Kisumu. I will be linked to the markets outside. I don't have to go looking for that. When it comes to commerce, we have Jumia, the famous Jumia. We have Amazon. My directors always ask me, Elizabeth, is Jumia paying its taxes? What are we getting from Amazon? What are we getting from Checky.com? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, this summit has opened my eyes. I've been having sleepless nights. Anytime I see Director Leonard and Mukesh, I know they will ask me, are you taxing this? But I don't have an answer for them because my staff, when you ask them, they tell you, yes, they are charging. Then they confront me with an invoice, Elizabeth, look at this, they are not charging. So this forum is very, very good for us to share ideas. You as the stakeholders, you need to come out and tell us this is the way we need to do it, such that we do not come up with policies which will not work for you. Actually, that is the main reason why we have this summit, such that we interact, engage, 
discuss issues. He has talked of very many critical things which I have picked. And those are the issues that we need now to implement as Kenya Revenue Authority and move forward in taxing this sector. Come January, I will be implementing this, but it is important that we come up with procedures, policies, tax laws, which actually are acceptable and implementable. Not only those ones which are good for the authority, but what actually can make us come together and collect revenue for this great country. We have the insurance, banking and the insurance sector. Nowadays, I don't need to go to the bank. I'll sit there, I'll get a message from my mother, I need so much. I'll simply go to my, the, through my bank, get money while I sit there and send it through Safaricom. So these are the kind of disruption I'm saying. If you are still going to the bank to queue, please ask your neighbor if something is wrong with you. Yeah? I know nobody will accept they go to queue. Yeah? If you are going to pay taxes, you are allowed. But going to queue to withdraw, that is wrong, yeah? So nowadays we have mobile banking. So KRM, what we need to do also is to style up. Like I thought you were going to say, no, no, why, why taxes? We should simplify the way tax payment is done. You don't need to give us a check. You don't need to queue. You should be paying taxes from the comfort of your house. Yeah? If you want to clap, you clap. Because... <laughs> Yeah. So, when I look at Kenya Revenue Authority, from the tax administration pers perspective, what are the aspects of digital disruption? The first one is, when I look at the conventional businesses, as the Commissioner of Domestic Taxes, I am interested in those taxpayers who are doing buying and selling for my VAT buying and selling. So things are moving from the conventional buyer-seller relationship to digital. So we sat down with my team and we asked ourselves, we are not seeing what they are doing now. What are we going to do? Directors, it is a dilemma we've been having, but I have a strong team on the ground working on this. The other one is on face-to-face -face interactions have moved now to digital platform, Transactions have moved from cash and check to online and mobile payments. That is the cashless payment. And KRA, where I was talking of an A, we have closed all the cash offices we used to have countrywide. Yeah? Another club. <laughs> yeah? So we have closed all these cash offices, and right now we do not receive cash at all, at all, within any KRA premises. So all the tax payments are done at the bank. If there is anybody who has ever been told to pay within KRA, please let me know after this. Or you see Terra Saidimu. Daktari stand so that they see you. Thank you. You will know him later. The next one, we have moved from manual record keeping to hosting digital records. We are no longer asking taxpayers to file returns, manual returns. We are no longer asking taxpayers to file manual refund applications. We are no longer asking you to bring a copy of your identity card when you are applying for a PIN, when you are applying for any of our services. If at all you have been asked for a copy, please let us know because that is KRAB that got that B but not this original KRA that intends to get an A. So the other one is enhanced access to cross-border markets for goods and services, and the digital intermediary, especially those providing the digital platforms. We have also seen enhanced efficiencies, which unfortunately some of them have led to job redundancies. Because if you create efficiency, what people used to do manually is being done through technology, then it means you downsize. And do you know the impact of that on my revenue? It means that your payroll shrinks. 
and my PYE goes down. So how do I recover the gap which has been created because of use of uh, technology? So what is the challenge the tax administrations, especially Kenya Revenue Authority, are facing when it comes to digitization? One, there is limited visibility of online transactions. And because of this limited visibility, we sat down and asked ourselves, who can help us? And the only person we felt has got very rich data that can help KRA is my brother, Safaricom. Yeah? <laughs> and they know we got, you saw it on the board, eh? Yeah? He was very stern and he said, I am ready to go anywhere, but KRA forget about it. I'm going to maintain confidentiality between what I have for my clients. My clients mean much to me, but we will plead with him after coming up with relevant laws that also protects him that when we have that visibility, it is going to help the country because compliance will go up. The reason why we wanted that data and we want visibility is that we have a lot, a lot of transactions going on. We have online platforms, like I talked of Jumia. If you are here, please, I'm just using it as an example. Don't get offended. But we were used to, this is a shop. I go to the shop, buy goods. At the end of the day, this taxpayer will account for what, has, what they have uh, invoiced. But right now, People just make orders and goods are delivered. And so we are asking ourselves, at what point, where is the tax point, and who is responsible? Is it the seller, or is this the platform owner? Who is responsible for the tax? So these are very hard questions that we need to talk about. You need to come up with proposals such that when we're implementing, we should not hurt anybody in the process. The other one is on timeliness of the visibility to ensure on-time declaration and payment. One critical thing that as a tax person we have to maintain is on-time filing of returns. And on-time filing on returns will be observed on the due date. So if the transactions themselves are not visible to Kenya Revenue Authority, how are they going to manage the on-time filing of return management? So these are critical issues we are looking at, and the players in this field, we need to sit as a team and agree. The reason why I'm saying this, I saw some disclaimers from some of you saying, I write up to me that I'm not responsible for this, it is the seller who is seated in UK, who is seated in the US. But you are the person through which these goods have gone to the purchaser. So we need to agree on the mode of knowing who is responsible for the tax. Then uh, the other issue which he has rightfully said, Safaricom rightfully said, is weak regulatory framework actually to manage digi digitization in the country. But not all is lost. From the KRA perspective, already we have the ICT bill. It's not yet enacted into law, but it's going to help us into bringing some of the regulatory framework, which he said needs to be put in place such that when I ask him for data, he will give it without having fear that any of his clients might take him to court for breach of confidentiality. The other one is uh, the information bill. This one is also being deb debated. And once they are enacted into law, then we are going to have a smooth ride into having access to um, information from any of uh, the players. So what is the impact of digitization on the care business daily, day-to-day -day business processes. When we look at ITAX, 
ITAX is one of the systems that actually has, it's a game changer in carry. Because we have totally transformed from the way we used to work the, uh, do our business to the new approach, where you can register online, you file online, and we don't intervene unless we, you have a problem. We know when you have a new system, you, have to, you are bound to have some weaknesses, especially transitional challenges. So some of these transi transitional challenges, KRA is addressing them by putting up a very robust support framework. So the support framework is there countrywide. You go to each and every county, you will get KRA's presence on people who are just there to do what? To support you if you have a challenge with uh, ITAX. Right now, taxpayers have access to their tax records because of ITAX. You will be able to know and check whether the actual payment you made is reflected in your ledger. Sometimes we get complaints, I paid yesterday, but I have not seen my ledger updated. When you see that your ledger is not updated and you paid through ITAX, it means that remittance from your bank is what has delayed. So it is also helping us to monitor whether the banks are living unto the service level agreements they signed with Kenya Revenue Authority. The other one is secure maintenance of taxpayer records. We are no longer having piles and piles of paper returns placed in one place. Walk to second floor, which was the center of that data capture. You will not find a single return on the floor. You will not find a single return on a table. The reason being, we are capturing these things online and it is good for Kenya Revenue Authority and it is also good for the taxpayer. Why is it good for the taxpayer? It is good for the taxpayer in that when you capture your own details, the errors which were prone to manual data capture are not there. They might be there for a few taxpayers, but they are, I can say they are not eliminated, but they are seriously, seriously reduced. We no longer have them, but we might have one or two. The next one is on opening up of payment options. I believe there is no taxpayer here who will say that KRA said, give me post-dated checks, send me a check for payment of this tax. No. If you have been asked, then you are paying to KRAB. Right now, the taxpayers handle their own payments, you pay to the bank, and you simply give us evidence of payment. Then the other impact is that real-time visibility of tax payment. Any payment you make, like now, after lunch, I rush back to the office to check how far are we. I'm able to know. I am able to know the collections from each and every taxpayer at any given time on real-time basis. I'm able to know any taxpayer who has filed a return, a payment return. I'm very aggressive about that. You do self-assessment and you don't pay and I flag them out immediately. And we've been having complaints. Before, we never used to have people writing to us, but now there is notification. The system notifies you that you are supposed to pay this and you have not paid. It is past due date. So if you get those notifications, please get in touch with us. When you get any letter from KRA, and the letter from KRA especially on non-compliance should be telling you exactly where you have a problem. If my friend director Leonard here is a non-filer, but from my data, I can be able to see that he is moving millions and millions of shillings in terms of business transactions, I should be able to tell him, dear director Leonard, your return for the month of April was nil, but the information I have is that you transacted via the following invoices and you supplied one, two, three, the following purchases. Please 
Within 14 days, amend your return. You are even given the opportunity to do what? To amend your return. And if you cannot amend uh, that you have difficulties, please go and see so and so, this floor, this office at this time. That is how KRA has transformed. The reason being, anything we are doing now is evidence-based. So what opportunities has digitization brought to us as a tax administration? One, we are now having the opportunity to simplify our processes, simplification of processes. We know our processes are not very simple, and I can say Mamamboga down there cannot be able to transact without help. Is it possible that KRA can come up with processes which are self-guiding? There is nobody who taught my mother how to use M-Pesa. I always use M-Pesa as an example. Nobody, nobody went to class. Nobody was sensitized on how to use M-Pesa. But they know immediately. They hear ding, you hear my mother saying, Peso dojo. <laughs> huh? Peso dojo means money has come. Yeah? So she will check. And indeed, she will get the money. So we want our services also to be very, very simple. Right from registration up to payment. Once that is done, and what I can assure you as our stakeholders is that this is a process which has started. We have a team in place just reviewing the processes. In terms of registration, how do we make it simple? Such that in terms of PIN, even when you are seated here, you can be able to get a PIN in your, through your mobile. So we have a team working on a mobile app. And before end of this year, it should be up and running. So that is a, a challenge now to our technical team, because I've told the whole world that by end of the year, it will be up and running. So take it up and run with it. So for mobile services is another option, where we're having mobile registration, M filing, M payment. Just from the use of my phone, I should be able to transact with KRA without walking to KRA. And once we do that, all those officers we have deployed to sit outside there to help can be reskilled so that they do more productive work. So come 2020, that is our objective and that is what we want to meet. The other, the, the other opportunity we have is system integration for real-time access to transactions. <clears throat> so who can we integrate with? We can integrate with the Ministry of Lands. Immediately, you transact with land, you pay capital gains tax, it will be reading in KRA systems. And we have started this journey, and what I can tell you is that Integration has actually helped us grow our revenue by tre tremendous percentage. Capital gains tax for the month grew by over 100%. And it grew simply because of integration, where we have visibility of what they are doing, and also simplified payment process. Pre-population of tax returns. If you are an employer, and your employees don't have any other business. You are an employee, you don't have any other business. Once your employer files and pays for your payee, it should pre-populate your return. Such that when you are filing your return, the only thing you'll do is to key in your PIN and all information about you will pop up. And the, simply, the system will simply ask you, do you have any other source of income? If you say yes, you move into disclose. If you say no, the system will tell you submit. And remember, if you have any other source of income and you say you don't have, Dr. Saidimu will know the next day. I had somebody talking about spy. We don't have spies in KRA, but we just have very, very intelligent officers who are collecting 
Don't, please don't laugh. Eh? Hmm? We don't work with spies, but we work with very, very intelligent, highly skilled. Like the one I'm calling Dr. Saidemo, who was trained in the US, yeah, by IRS. So anytime he talks of data, we all stand because we know the truth in whatever he's saying. We have collected a lot of revenue just from the intelligence he's giving us. And he cannot get intelligence unless we have this information through digitization. So, the other one is on enacting laws and policies that support and track digital transactions. There is no way we can have a smooth ride if we don't have an enabling law, if we don't have supportive law. So our policy team are working day and night to ensure that whatever we are doing is up to standard. Whatever we are doing is backed by law. There is nowhere in the world where taxation can be collected haphazardly. Taxation must be anchored in law. And if there is anybody who is charging you tax and you are not aware, you have the right as a taxpayer to ask, which section of the law are you using? And I believe it is good for me also to tell you that outside there, you might find there's another Mrs. Mayo. I hope you understand what I'm saying. And that Mrs. Mayo, the only thing that might differentiate that Mrs. Mayo from the real Mrs. Mayo maybe is the size. Yeah? Somebody just heard um, there's a Mrs. Mayo in KRA. So he goes to say Mrs. Mayo. Then you have seen the real Mrs. Mayo, isn't you? So you say, no, this is not the Mayo I know. Yeah? So what I'm trying to say is that outside there we have people who are not KRA officers but masquerading with badges as KRA officers. So be aware. And you have the right to challenge them. You have the right to ask, which section of the law are you using? Why do you want to charge me on this? Because they don't know the law, so they will tell you anything. So please exercise your right as Kenyans, exercise your right as our esteemed taxpayers, that you don't fall into the trap of people who actually are not uh, meant to collect taxes. The other one is on service delivery. Digitization actually has really helped us. From the data from my desk, I will be able to know which taxpayers need taxpayer education, and I forward it to head of marketing. I will be able to know how many taxpayers have got VAT obligation, but they have never filed. And when I call them, they tell me, yes, I have VAT obligation, but I am filing my return annually. That is a case of lack of awareness. Some will tell you, I have VAT obligation, yes, but I paid it when I bought the good. So that is also an issue of taxpayer education. So service delivery, we are able to know even taxpayers who are willfully refusing to comply with the law. So if they are willfully refusing to comply with the law, what do, we say, what do we do to them? I don't want to say full force of the law. What we do first is that we bring them forward, we talk to them, and we tell them, this is what I have seen. And I am ready to assist you. I am ready to help you change. Full force of the law only comes when they say, can't do, won't do. So please don't blame KRA for being hard. When you see we are taking even the prosecution route, that is somebody who has even told me on my face, can't do and won't do. I believe there is nobody here who will entertain that kind of behavior. Because if all taxpayers in Kenya say can't do, won't do, where will the government get revenue to run this great country? I'm just saying that such that I try to explain to you some of the measures we are taking. We are not taking because 
we are against anybody, but we are just taking because some of these taxpayers are actually hardcore. How many taxpayers do we have, and how many have been taken through prosecution? We are very facilitative, and we try as much as possible to help you comply. So please come forward if you have an issue so that we engage. So what is the role of big data in tax administration, especially Kenya Revenue Authority? How has it helped us? The first one, use of big data has actually helped us to navigate around the filing, registration, payment, and full disclosure. Those four are the key pillars of tax compliance. So how is it helping us with registration? Right now, we no longer walk from one office to the other, except for the team we have who are actually mapping the properties. But all our recruitment is done from the desk. How do we know that a taxpayer is having a go down in Kayole and is not registered? I will be able to know through data matching and the, the system will be able to tell me all taxpayers who are trading, but they do not have a PIN. So I have a fully fledged team just doing that. Once that information is given, they register those taxpayers. First, they call them. A few will come, some will remain, will refuse to come. So the ones who will refuse to come, we register them forcefully. After registered them forcefully, you get a complaint in writing now. I have a big problem. Somebody registered me without me knowing who is this, infringing on my constitutional right. And as they are doing that, they have done business in billions. They have even charged the tax to the person who was not aware. And when you charge tax, you collect that tax and you don't remit. How do you call it? You are stealing from your client. And when you steal, is it not a criminal offense? It is. Yeah? When you steal, it's a criminal offense. You charge tax knowingly. You even give an invoice written 16% VAT. Then you fail to do what? Remit. That is a serious criminal offense. Maybe some people do it unknowingly without knowing that it's a criminal offense. So from big data, we get that. The next one is man uh, filing. We no longer receive manual returns. And from the big data, I am able to flash out my non-filers one day after due date. Right now, as we are speaking, my due date was on, uh, Tuesday, on Monday, for, uh, on 9th. By 10th, our 10th was a holiday. By 11th, I was ready to have a list of everybody who was supposed to pay, pay YE, but they failed. And the system enables me to go ahead and know how many employees do you have. If you have declined from least 10,000 to 8,000, have you retrenched? Have, do you have resignations? What is the impact of your payroll on our revenue? So that one the system is able to give me. Then uh, we have payments. Immediately after due date, I am able to know how many taxpayers were supposed to pay. They have made self-declarations by filing, but they have totally failed to pay in the bank. Because I will be able to have a return here, but there is no correspondent payment. That one I know immediately after the due date. So the issue of having payment return without payment, payment has been on the rise. And what we have done as CARE is that we have created a project called PRWP. PRWP means payment return without payment. So these are people we need to enforce collection from them immediately because they made self-declaration. So when you hear that our debt team are on you, please don't ask them why they have not given you a demand. They don't give a demand on a self-declaration you've made yourself. 
what they will tell you is that we have noted that you have I'm finishing. We have noted that you are supposed to pay so much, you have not paid, please pay within 14 days, or your bank accounts will be frozen. Then the other one, which is very critical, is full disclosure. Somebody can file a return, make a payment, but they are not making full disclosure. So through the use of data, I will be able to know those invoices you are supposed to declare, but you said, please, Declare invoice one, two, three, and leave four, five because they were of big values. I will be able to know and send you a demand. Information sharing. Information sharing both locally and internationally. We are able to share information with Uganda, with Tanzania, with uh, even Rwanda. And internally, we are also able to share information within the departments and even within the tax offices. Then, in terms of compliance management, the approach KRA has taken now is called data-driven approach. So, data-driven approach to compliance is where it is evidence-based, and I don't come to you unless I have information about you. And I believe you've seen a change. Our officers no longer come to you that, give me all these records, I want to come for an audit. The reason why we did that is that we know that you need to have time in your businesses so that you can be more productive. And when you are more productive, I get more taxes. And that is what makes me happy. Yeah? So staff are working from the offices, and they only come to you if there is anything that needs to be confirmed. So the last thing I'd like to talk about are the misconceptions. What is out there is that the, suppliers, the supplies made online are not subject to tax. That is a misconception. Mr. Ray or policy talked about it. So if you know you are in that sector, please start complying by charging tax. Then the current tax laws do not apply to online trading. We have laws that actually support online trading both VAT and income tax laws, so please uh, look into that. Then taxing this sector will make it more uh, a bit uncompetitive. Those are misconceptions which if we stick to, then uh, we are not going to move forward. Then there is one which actually I've not put on the board that KRA is being too aggressive. That is a misconception. We have thousands and thousands of taxpayers, and we are only aggressive to non-compliance. So if you know you are non-compliant, our taxpayers out there, that one, my focus is there, and I will be very aggressive with them. And not to an extent that we kill them, no. Aggressive in that I want them to change, to be good citizens. Thank you, may God bless you all. All right. Another round of applause for Mrs. Elizabeth Mayo, Commissioner. I'm told that I should sit where I can be seen on the other side. You have the monopoly um, of power. This is my fifth year coming to this conference. And the first time, five years ago, we talked about digital disruption. And people didn't quite take it well. Um, but now it has come. Disruptions both at the tax collector's level, disruption at the taxpayers because business models are changing. Um, and we were not willing to pay attention to emerging technologies like blockchain, artificial intelligence. Now these companies are using the monas and sweeping away our own companies. So this session would benefit both the bears and also the <clears throat> tax collector. I'll go very quickly. I start with my sister Jane there. A few years ago, breweries used to come with a big check and give to KRA as the largest taxpayers before Steve overtook them. <laughs> Do you still bring the check? <laughs> No, there is no check to give. 
these guys, Mrs. Mayo, can see how many bottles are going through the line even before the end of, by 20th, she's already swept what we need to pay, because she can see. And, and I guess back to the point, it's, it's technology. Now with technology from just next door, they can tell how many bottles we are driving through the line, because they activate the stamps, excise stamps. They can tell how many bottles, uh, how many cases we produce. So they can tell how much we owe them from a tax perspective in excise. So things have changed. Including for your agents? So that one we have to do a bit of calculation towards the end of, uh, of the month. So I think that's, that's still not there, but uh, in the manufacturing, manufacturing area, that's well done from a technology perspective. Isaac leads the most digital bank in this country. I mean, it does all, most of the transactions through um, M-Pesa. Um, what lessons can you give KRA with respect to digital and digitization of financial services? Thank you so much, Professor. It's actually, being here is an eye-opener uh, for me, uh, and having this conversation is uh, particularly important because uh, one recognizes uh, from uh, the presentation by uh, Mrs. Mayo that actually KRA has uh, moved into the digital economy in quite a substantial way. And uh, if I was to draw parallels <coughs> from uh, a banking perspective, and uh, reflect on uh, some of the comments uh, she made. Uh, first, I think, is a recognition that uh, business models are changing and uh, recognizing that uh, change in business model means that uh, consumers want different ways to interact with uh, products uh, to make uh, payments and recognize that uh, the incidences of payments are changing and the incidences of transactions are changing and ensure that uh, as these transactions are taking place, it does not take away the need uh, uh, to levy uh, taxation. And we, they have to ensure that uh, they are building systems which allow for that. And I think from the presentation I saw and from, uh, uh, from the talk uh, she gave, it is clear that uh, that's been clearly recognized. Because for us as a bank, uh, as from a banking perspective, one of the key things we recognized was that uh, one, business models were changing. Uh, secondly, customer behavior was changing and we needed to change the way we interacted with them. Customers were looking for convenience and you can leverage digitization and technology and simplification uh, to basically be able to make uh, customers' lives uh, much, much, uh, uh, much, much easier. Uh, the other thing which uh, I see from, uh, uh, from uh, my observation of uh, some of the things happening and uh, some of the things, some of the tools we've used is uh, leveraging the partnerships you have much, much more effectively. And again, uh, it is something I've uh, now patently seen as an opportunity which uh, KRA is uh, using quite, uh, uh, quite effectively. So I think that uh, if you recognize that the business models are changing, if you recognize that uh, consumer and company models are changing, then you change the way uh, you approach uh, the incidences of business behavior uh, so that you can continue uh, to recover the tax which is, which is due without fearing that you will actually lose. So as uh, physical uh, infrastructure disappears, digital infrastructure infrastructures come in and activities like buying and selling still continue. So tax incidences have to continue as a result of that. Kamal, um, you were on the attack from Elizabeth one of the owners of taxi hailing services in this country. How should you be taxed? And what role do you see technology playing in terms of taxation in this country? Um, first of all, we think uh, the newer technologies that are coming into the market, especially technologies like blockchain, uh, technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and IoT, which is Internet of Things. I think some of these technologies, when you use it in the right fashion, will help uh, both um, us as uh, the business, as the com business community, as well as the people who are collecting the taxes. Um, we, 
uh, I give you an example. We run a ride-hailing company called Little. Little is a Kenyan company that is equivalent to uh, um, likes like Ubers and the others. Because we are in the country, we are Actually, I, I, I'm sorry to say, but sometimes we feel that we are always watched and we are always told that we are supposed to pay the tax in this fashion. But when you compare the way we pay the taxes and the way the taxes are taken from our competitors is actually not on the same level ground. The other thing, very, very recently, the same thing that happened is uh, because we are a Kenyan company, uh, NTS has stopped us from hailing shuttles. Now. Uh, the difference is that because we are, we are a Kenyan company, because we are here, why should we get a sep different treatment than the companies who are offering the services from abroad? So I think some of the points that were made uh, in this uh, speech that uh, KRA is, is now digitizing and KRA is looking ways to uh, taxing the digital economy, we are very happy with that and anything that we can do to support, anything that we can work together so that we are always on the right side of the law, we'll always make sure that uh, we support. Beatrice, um, Kamala has mentioned some of the emerging technologies. How do we optimize them to enhance tax collection in this country? Okay, so for KRA, we are adapting to the latest um, trends in technology. So let me just mention a few of the trends that you have seen that you're, that you're adapting to. There's a lot of data available in KRA. Uh, as Commissioner Domestic Taxes has said, we have a lot of data coming from ITAX. We also have other systems. We have the custom systems. We have the customer relationship management systems. So we have a lot of data available. Uh, and besides this, we also have data coming from other government institutions because government is sharing data uh, with other institutions. So we have a lot of information that we can leverage on. Uh, then this happens in, within, yeah, in a background of a, 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 taxi, a taxation environment that is changing. You know, our commissioner talked about the, the digital taxation. Uh, she did mention the, blo the, the, the blockchains and the cryptocurrencies, uh, which are not even regulated in this country. So we need to be able to have a view of all the transactions. But the good side is that we also have powerful um, analytical tools that are able to give us insights, the hidden insights, and we are leveraging on that. So one of the things we have done is that we have a data warehousing project. Uh, or let me just call it a tool that comes with a centralized storage of data. So we have the data from all the systems within KRA and data from other from our third parties, all centralized at one place, and analytical tools. So we have business intelligence tools that uh, we are using to be able to derive some of the insights that the commissioner talked about, but we also have advanced analytics tools that are um, allowing us to be able to derive further insights. And I'll talk about uh, some of the changes we, 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 we have seen. We previously did very traditional analytics, so we, 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 we looked at data from a descriptive analytics perspective. Now we are getting into an area where we are, we are using predictive, uh, predictive tools to be able to get further insights. And what um, uh, our commissioner talked about that you are able to derive insights. There is quite a big uh, proportion of attacks that came from you are leveraging on data. So there is quite a lot that is happening, and I'm hoping that um, <laughs> the Safari Com <laughs> will be able to maybe adjust their grade and maybe give us a better grade because there's so much that that is happening. Thank you. Actually, you have a lot a lot of data that you may not need Safaricom, but I want to ask you another, another question. Yes. What <laughs> Madam Commissioner said, that people have been saying that you are abrasive and stuff like that. How much of KRA is using technology, especially artificial intelligence in public relations, especially using chatbots, if I'm doing my, my taxes at night and nobody I can call to, I can actually go online and, and get all the answers. Okay. So the last few years have seen us digitize, you know, bring in all these digital tools. But now we are at that point, we are moving from uh, focusing on the digital tools to 
providing service. So the advanced analytics is something that we started this year. Uh, but yes, we are using predictive analytics. Uh, we have a chat, a chat bot, and maybe it's not um, to the levels, the international standards levels, but we have a, ta a tax bot. Uh, let me say that it's, we've just started the work, and we're hoping that in the next few uh, months, you're going to be seeing results. And hoping that in the next uh, tax summit, you're going to be talking of um, results that you've been able to achieve. Okay, yeah. I will go back to, the, I will come to Steve, but I will go back to Jane and say, are there ways you can collaborate <coughs> with CARE to improve efficiency? Yes, I think there are very many ways. Um, firstly, I think technology is here in a big way, and we all need the data and analytics, and I'm glad that the language is even changing, even at KRE, using artificial intelligence to make conclusions, even for business management. So, and I'll talk about excise or tax. In my industry, we are very heavily taxed, but that taxation also affects business performance. So how can we collaborate and get the data of what is actually happening at certain rates, or what are the elasticities of, uh, of uh, beer prices, for example, and then therefore it can uh, inform policy within KRE or within government. So I think there are very many ways that we can collaborate. And the, the other thing, I think point number two, is that when you, you have a lot of technology and artificial intelligence, data is data, you can't change the numbers, so you tend to have very objective conversations rather than subjective assumptions. So I think we can collaborate more, uh, A, to improve efficiencies of tax collection, B, to, under to understand business uh, analysis, and C, to improve the whole operations, because I think we all, we all want to pay tax, we all want to pay rightful tax. And I think when you have um, good data and good reading of that data, you even reduce uh, places where you're going to have conflict. You have less conflict because it's open, it's out, it's out there. So I think we can do better. Thank you. I want to ask Isaac um, a simple question. Um, one area that Madam Commissioner talked about is integration. And uh, the bank recognizes income um, or there are some charges which are actually tax related. Um, would the banking sector agree to integrate such that the tax goes directly instead of you doing reconciliations at the end of the month? I, th I think that uh, uh, through the systems we, we, have, uh, we have put in place uh, with KRA, I think you had uh, at the commission uh, comment that uh, <coughs> they don't accept cash anymore. Uh, secondly, uh, they do not, I think, even accept uh, uh, checks at, C at KRA. Essentially, we've built and aligned our systems with uh, the KRA such that uh, all taxpayers are actually able to process uh, their tax payments uh, through, uh, uh, through commercial banks into an account which uh, is then swept uh, to the KRA. Uh, within very, very clearly defined, uh, defined parameters. Now that I see that as stage one of, uh, of, uh, <coughs> of collaboration with uh, uh, the KRA. And I see step two as basically ensuring that uh, when the payment is made, it ultimately goes to the KRA account directly without uh, stopping in banks for a, day, uh, for a day or two. And I see that day coming because uh, I know one of two other jurisdictions uh, in which we do business where uh, the tax authority is basically looking at uh, putting in systems, which as they, it's the same thing they do with, uh, with uh, breweries, where they track your activities, they are able to track your activities and allow you to then make payments on demand as the activities are basically taking place. So I see that taking place within the next uh, two to three years. Thank you. I want to ask a question to Madam Elizabeth. Um, I'm from academia, and we would want to help you in terms of doing research. For example, uh, what other countries are doing with respect to taxation of uh, taxi hailing services or um, online transactions, 
Um, I wonder whether you could sponsor a few PhD or masters to specifically study. Okay, thank you, thank you so much for that. There are actually very many areas that uh, would really like uh, that kind of uh, gesture, especially on research. We have a research team, but uh, we even have our uh, revenue training school where they really do a lot of research. And uh, right now, as we stand, in terms of sponsoring, we can discuss. But uh, I cannot well, confidently you can, say... You can, pick, you can pick the ones you would take to research yes. to come to us, then it enhances the collaboration. Yeah, that's the collaboration I'm talking of, that we need to work as one, because we are working for the same country. Yeah, And uh, in case we are not able to sponsor, then uh, I don't think that can stop you from helping us, but it is a discussion we can take further. Because there are several areas, really, that... Uh, if you can help us uh, create efficiency, that will help in enhancing revenue collection. Thank you. Kamal, um, do you see any risks in this new emerging technologies with yeah. respect to tax collection? Okay, the, the, the challenge and the fear that we are facing is that we are not clear on how we are getting taxed. So we are paying the tax as we think that should be paid. And our fear is that if something would change and if it would be backdated, then it could be a serious problem for companies like us. So please, uh, uh, you know, I think, you know, Madam, uh, you must support uh, Dr. Demo to go and do some more research yeah. so, that <laughs> <laughs> so that you come up with laws and uh, you know, ways taxing companies like uh, us who are purely into the digital economy. I had assumed that you would say something like, uh, when we talk about AI, people think there will be a lot of unemployment. But what it would mean is that some of the stuff you, being used in this site would move to data, collect, data anal analytics, and nobody will be laid off. Um, do you think we would have any risks with these technologies? I, I, I completely agree that we would have no risk and the reason we would have no risk is the new the technologies would create new jobs that were not existing before so as some of the jobs would be possibly i think the job description would change but i don't think the jobs would fall down in fact the jobs will actually go up when you bring in the newer technologies Beatrice, what partnership you have so many people here i can see mugambi i can see so many people here what partnerships do you want so that we can work together as a nation okay. to see this? Okay, so I'll, I'll get back, back to that, but let me just comment on the data uh, integration. Because when I listened to him speak on uh, how they are able to integrate with other systems, that is part of a strategy, and we're already doing it. So we have a strategy of um, integrating or giving a provision to have other people integrate all, uh, other people integrate with KRA. Uh, system to system integration is already happening, but also providing um, interfaces for, 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 for development of softwares or uh, applications that uh, maybe simplify uh, tax administration. So that is in the pipeline. And maybe in the next one year, we're going to be talking about having people, able, I mean, having taxpayers able to integrate with KRA. But about partnerships, we are already partnering with um, a few, uh, we have uh, a few partnerships. First of all, partnerships in data sharing. Um, we are doing this with other government agencies, but also with other um, with other agencies, and especially uh, on the basis of um, bilateral agreements, multilateral agreements. So that is happening, but we can still partner more. And maybe this is the point at which I would even ask Safaricom to <laughs> partner with us and see how we can share data. Because, I mean, data sharing is of mutual benefits. We benefit and uh, the other partners benefit. So it's uh, an engagement that we are, we, 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 it's a conversation we are, with the, 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 that we are ready to, to have with other partners. But also we are talking about partnering in building capacity. Um, you talked about... Uh, 
and the need for maybe new skills or maybe jobs changing, that is already real in Kerry. Uh, we already are at a point where we are employing people with other skills. We are also reskilling. Uh, so it's a conversation that, you already, we, that is already happening. But we are seeking into partnering more with maybe schools like Kesra so that they are able to get to, 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 to maybe uh, uh, give us more networks where we can be able to build our capacity. And yeah, those, those are the two areas that I, that I would think of. But also partnering with maybe other people who can maybe just uh, make uh, paying taxes easier in whichever way. Partnerships with MSCs, M uh, small enterprises. Oh, yes. To grow them to come up. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Like, you go like you are helping, no, well, you will be helping them. Incubating then them. You, you <laughs> understand the, the revenue dynamics in the, in the micro, small, and medium enterprises and stuff. Yes. Is that too much? No, no, it's not. I think it's already something that is happening. It's already something that is happening. And also partnering with, uh, maybe I forgot, there's the professional associations, you know, so that we are able to have a seat down and agree on how we can enhance, uh, enhance compliance on both sides. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Uh, Steve, I want to ask you, but I have to say a small story about this. I was in Cameroon uh, to speak about uh, the emerging technologies, and Cameroon had introduced uh, a social media tax, and the taxation of uh, uh, equipment, I mean uh, devices, taxation of broadband. I said, if you really want to get everybody, this is something that enables you to get everybody into the space you can tax them. Do you fear that the government may begin to tax this, or they have already ta or they are already taxing? What are the risks that you are seeing? Uh, the risk is people like you mentioning it <laughs> <laughs> and getting uh, Commissioner <laughs> Mayor thinking about it. Um, look, we offer very many services as communication companies, and all we always worry about is the ability of people to consume those services. I was here in 2010, 2011, when the first taxes started on a service which we ran called M-Pesa. Before that, it had been seen as a tool for financial inclusion. There were no taxes on it at all. At some point, the government reached a point and said, we need some more money. And they came and said, we're going to tax the M-Pesa. And I spent a lot of time in Treasury, um, you know, and you know, many meetings and many lobbies. But they eventually got me to a place where they said, because I told them, you can't put excise on something that is helping communities to come out of poverty. Excise is a syntax. It is what is put on... Uh, you should have said, <laughs> which would bring you more revenue. Yeah. It is what is put on the things that uh, uh, Jane sells. <laughs> and, and, and they looked at me and they said, you know what, we need this tax. What do you want to call it? You know, call it whatever you want to call it, but you know, it's going to be put there. And <clears throat> uh, so we started a regime where we started taxing M-Pesa. And of course, we had argued that if you do that, it will reduce the uptake. Um, the same thing with what you are saying as an example. If today the government came to us and said we want to tax data specifically, we would be in a lot of, uh, we'd be up in arms because we think that is what people are consuming more than anything else. In fact, if you look at the performance of many GSM companies, the only growth factor now is data. Voice has either tapered off or is declining. SMS, I don't know, you know, SMS are now used for confirmation of transactions and things like that. No one sends an SMS, I don't know, people, they don't send an SMS as much as possible. So that would be something we would be very concerned about. The bigger effect is, you know as a professor in this, in this field and the studies we've done, there's a value in an economy having access to good internet. So placing a tax on that could militate against some progress that could be gained by having that access. So that is something which the government uh, should really weigh carefully. Um, before implementing. And it would be best if uh, those ideas are not even brought up at all. <laughs> Thank you. I think we give a chance to the audience to ask a few questions. Okay, my name is Edward Kusawa. I'm a 
question goes to Madam Commissioner. Slightly louder. Globally, people are talking about domestic consumption as a policy. We're encouraging domestic consumption. Kenya speaks about attracting foreign direct investment. Uh, Madam Commissioner, I'm an economist. Could you please talk about domestic? What are you people? You, your topic is simplifying tax administration. Could you please tell us how you are simplifying so that we can encourage domestic consumption? And I really support that guy from Safaricom. The issue about access and affordability. We need affordability of broadband, it's something that needs to spur innovation, and therefore we are behind it. So please don't tax the issue of broadband. Thank you. All right. Let's get another question here from this side. Uh, my name is Duncan Kitune. I'm a consultant. Uh, my question goes to the commissioner. Uh, it's regards to the data storage. Uh, the law states that uh, a taxpayer should keep the data for five years, but sometimes you go to KRA and you ask data for, like, from 2000. What's the start on that? My name is Robert. I'm a tax consultant. My question is posed to the KRA team. We have Elizabeth and Beatrice. I would also invite some comments from the panel. Now, Elizabeth, you mentioned, uh, actually I can start with the theme of the session, which is all about simplifying tax administration. Elizabeth mentioned uh, some of the impacts so far uh, seen for ITAX. There's this real-time access to transactions. Beatrice mentioned uh, use of data warehousing. And, go, uh, go straight to the question so that we get more people. My question is, how interested would KRA be in a move away from self-assessment, uh, the self-assessment return regime we have right now? There are challenges we are seeing, for example, there's a lot of taxpayer apathy and indifference, which means people are not really interested in filing returns. These returns are prone to errors and fraud. Uh, Non-filing of returns or incorrect returns have punitive penalties and interest. Now, how interested will KRA be with doing away with these returns? Because uh, globally, we can actually benchmark. There's a move away from returns. I want to give the example of the UK, there's what is called the MTD, making tax digital. That's my question, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay, thank you so much. The first one was on um, domestic consumption as a policy. What is CARE doing to simplify the tax system? So my answer to that is that right now we know that we have a section of our society who actually can only file returns on when they get support. They can only file returns where they go through the agents. So KRA is aware of this. So what we are doing one is we are looking at processes. How do we make our processes simple? Right from registration to payment of taxes to disclosure. So there is a review of processes. We have a fully fledged team just doing business process engineering. Then uh, in terms of uh, systems, we are also looking at our systems and asking ourselves, are our systems simple enough for Mbamboga to interact with us? So we are going through module by module and trying to see if we can even make them simpler. We are also looking at other tools. Can we come up with like mobile apps that can make it easy for taxpayers to interact with us. And more so, we are creating awareness through our marketing division, such that each and every taxpayer outside there should be able to uh, know what is expected of them. Second question, yes. Okay, the second question is on data storage, where according to the law, you are only supposed to keep data for a period of five years. But sometimes you find CARE is asking you for data even for 2002. So what comes into play here is what kind of request were you given? Was it a request which is touching on investigation? Because when it comes to investigation, when it comes to tax evasion, which actually has been proved, then 
the law of five years does not arise. They have the right to go back and check on your past tax records so that they confirm whatever investigation is uh, being done. Otherwise, we restrict ourselves to five years and the data we have right now, even from my tax, we restrict it to five years. Madam, with, uh, with <laughs> the restriction was because the files were filling up space Nowadays, we don't. You find Americans have data from 18 something. Thank you. Why, why do we put five? Why can't we recommend to Parliament that data remains data? Yeah, that, that is a good idea. Mm. Yeah, uh, well uh, spoken. So it can be our proposal that we need to lift the five year limit it's because right now we have data. We are no longer relying on uh, manual returns such that it can be more than five years. I agree with that. Can Beatrice answer the other one? So, so that we, Beatrice answer the one from Robert. Okay, so on doing away with self-assessment uh, self -assessment and return firings, yes. so we are working towards um, having pre-populated tax forms. So we are using data and analytics to be able to pre-populate the taxpayers' returns, to be able to pre-populate the taxpayers' payment forms uh, for now. But I believe that if we'll be able to make all transactions real-time, and that is where we are headed, I believe in the next few years we should be having real-time transactions. Maybe there won't be any need for, 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 the, for, for the return, for, for filing of returns. But I would like Commissioner to comment on, where, on, on the aspect of doing away with the, with the, with the self-assessments. Okay, thank you, Beatrice. So on dealing away with the self-assessment, ideally, that is the future. And uh, why am I saying it's the future? Right now, taxpayers are doing self-assessment because they are telling us this is what we have done. And these are the transactions, self-declaration. But with data, that we have, we have information about you, we have information about your uh, business transactions for the month. So you simply log in and check whether it's correct or not. So I agree with you, moving forward, uh, very soon we should be doing away with this and uh, it is a proposal that uh, we actually need to move along with, carry it forward, such that we move towards making tax payment digital. Robert also said something about taxpayer apathy. Yeah. Um, what do we do? In terms of taxpayer apathy. Ro Robert, you clarify? Okay, thank you. Um, this context of taxation, what I mean by apathy is yes, the general public knows there are taxes uh, to be paid. There are various commitments to meet, but uh, they look around. They look at the existing uh, government administration and they see uh, prevalent corruption. So people wonder, why should I pay all these taxes? And then I see a lady carrying a gunia with 100 million for NYS. I am simply not going to comply because I don't think these taxes are going to be for the public good. That's the apathy we were talking about. Yes, they know there are tax uh, obligations to be met, but they're apathetic and they're indifferent to all these obligations. That's what we meant. Anybody want to? Okay. Yeah, maybe I can comment on that. So what Robert is actually saying is um, when we look at um, the issues of tax collection, we have one wing collecting taxes, then we have the expenditure side. So I believe he's uh, talking of the expenditure side. So when it, you, it comes to issues of uh, corruption, I agree with uh, Robert that um, that kind of behavior can actually discourage taxpayers from uh, paying taxes. But we all know and we have seen in the media, it is everywhere, that fight against corruption is now real. Fight against of corruption is the talk. Let me call it the talk of the town. Because at any given time, you can be called to go and take statements with the DCI. 
And the government has taken this very seriously, and it is something which is being observed, such that whatever we saw about the sacks is talking of people carrying money with the sacks is a thing of the past. So I'll encourage all taxpayers to pay taxes without actually thinking of their taxes will go to the wrong, uh, to the wrong hands. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon. My name is Anastasia. I'm a tax consultant. Uh, my question goes to Elizabeth. We have, whenever we want to apply for a tax compliance, we can check our iTax system for what we owe KRA. But you ha when you make payment for, from the iTax and your iTax ledger is clear, when you go to KRA, they check for you <coughs> the previous system, the old system ITMS and the from the manual system. Why can't we integrate the man what was in the manual system data and the ITMS into ITAX so that the taxpayer can access all the information on ITAX? And there's a question here for Steve. I believe it's from a lady. She says, what makes Safaricom a market leader in innovation? And what can KRA learn from Safaricom to enhance innovation in tax administration? Who, who asked that That's question? For Steve. I got this letter from a lady. Get from from one of the ladies in the newsroom, in the room, not in the newsroom. Oh, <laughs> there I know. I live in the newsroom, so that's what I think of. Okay. <laughs> so I got this from a lady here, yeah, and it's addressed. Okay. To the next, next okay. Safaricom, Steve. Would Already answer. asked a question. Let's see. Okay, my name is John Moura Kamau from uh, KRA. Uh, I'll start with uh, saying that Kuripa Ushuru ni kujitegemea. From the Bible, it says, pay what is into Caesar, what is due, and pay what is God's, what is required, the 10%. I'm looking at uh, our tax base, which is there about around 4 million. We are currently having maybe about there 1 million, which is compliant, and uh, around 3 million, which is partially compliant, which we are drilling in day in, day out. Looking at the population of Kenya, we are around 50 million. So we have another around 10 million in, form, in the informal sector, like the saloons, mm. the day to day where we go for our kinosis, and I mean even today I went for kinosis in the morning, our small saloons there, our readers go there, our tax files and the rest. And yet, we have not been able to tap into that. Because, one, we are having a budget constraint, which I think Madam Commissioner would uh, attest to that. The budget constraint to enable us to get those funds, to enable us to reach that 10 million, and even to partner with our, our other stakeholders. Now I'm asking Madam Commissioner and uh, our board, what are we going to do, and even I know Mr. Dem, you know about the budget constraints which is there currently. But we need to collect the tax from these other 10 million who are in the informal sector. What are we going to do so that we may sue these others to come in the tax bracket by getting that budget okay. to enable us to do our job? Okay, John. All right. The, we have three now. Um, f the first one for Anastasia, we, we would the integration of I, I, ITAX and ITMS. You, you, you can any time delegate. <laughs> to. Okay, thank you. So from Anastasia, uh, your main challenge is that any time you apply for tax compliance certificate, from your office you are able to check your ITAX ledger and find it's clean. I'm very happy you are capable of doing that. But when you come to KRA, you are being told that you have a debt which is in the legacy system. So what you are wondering is why can't the two systems be integrated? That one is a very, very good question and I believe it is affecting very many taxpayers. Yes, it is a problem. So what I can tell you is that currently we are having a fully fledged team led by Beatrice Gishoi here, they are doing data cleaning of the same same system, the legacy system you talked of, because we did not want to migrate 
wrong balances into ITAX. So once a taxpayer's ledger is cleaned, the correct balances are migrated into ITAX. And that is why when you apply for TCC, it is our responsibility as KRM to tell you, yes, under ITAX regime you are clean, but in legacy you had one, two, three. So it is uh, an issue we are aware of, and it is being uh, worked on. Actually, I wanted personally to also ask the same. Could you integrate with WhatsApp so that when I owe, you tell me instead of me coming when I'm, I okay, need you? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that, that, that one also is a very, very good proposal. Our technical team is here. They have picked it uh, such that uh, when you owe us, we simply communicate Some, through WhatsApp. SMS, an SMS yeah. or something. Yeah, that is a very, very good idea. A clap for him, you people, yeah. yeah uh, thanks. Sorry, sorry, a quick one, Dr. Demo. <laughs> I can do that for KRA. Oh, oh, hey, yeah. There is an app for free now. If I can get that business, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, uh, Elizabeth, take, take, take Kamali's phone. You can do an app for tomorrow. Steve. Why are you so good? Um, the, the fact is we are not. We don't think we are as innovative as we could be. But what we try and do is spend a lot of time, resources, and energy to solve people's problems. The way we work is we have, uh, we're not that many, we are like 5,500. <clears throat> but we have a dedicated innovation team. And all these people do is they sit down and come up with some ideas outside the noise of targets. I know like you carry people, you have targets. And when you're chasing targets, you have no time to be very creative. You just need to get to the targets. But we have set aside a team of people whose job is to look at our business, look at the customer, look at the problem, just the way I said during the, uh, uh, my talking points. And what I've learned is the next time I'm given 10 minutes, I should take 20. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> Madam Commissioner took a good chunk. But, <clears throat> uh, uh, but, but what I'm saying is we have people who are able to sit outside the main um, uh, business where they can do things which can fail and some things which can be really brilliant and take off. Because innovation is not a sure thing. I mean, out of 10 uh, uh, opportunities, five may not just totally work out. One may be absolutely gold but I succeed to a certain extent, or maybe a process improvement that is uh, bottom line saving. But we have to make that uh, uh, commitment. The other thing is you have to listen to your customer. So KRA's customer is all of us Kenyans, and we are many. I think, this, I think we are 46 million. The gentleman there thought we are 50 million. If you have 50 million or 46 million people in your country, and only four million people are paying taxes, you have a problem, yeah? What are the rest of the people doing, yeah? All of them wake up and do something during the day and feed their families. So there's some income they are earning. And if that income is not being taxed, then something is not adding up. So uh, just look at the areas which present like real problems to, um, to how you're working and then spend a lot of energy in, uh, in trying to solve them. And we're a firm believer, the last point I'll make is we're a firm believer in technology. Technology can uh, bridge very many things. So if you get the right people in the room and you have an idea, they will do the thinking for you as to how this can be done and how you can work backwards to what you want to achieve. People like Kamal, we have people in our teams who are just brilliant. A lot of Kenyans are very good with technology. This is the home of you know microfinance and all this fintech. So describe the problem and challenge them. Use the academic approach that a professor can speak about very well. Get people in a room and do hackathons or thinkathons where you tell them, this is our problem. How do we get this number from 4 million to 8 million? And you know, you get bright people, not people who are not bright. You always have to work with bright people. And, and, and challenge them and say, the team that comes up with the best and practical way of doing this, which can actually be put into a white paper, gets a particular you know, award. It may be cheaper to do that, but the ideas you get could transform um, an organization such as yourself and move from 4 million to, to 6 million to 8 million. Actually, yeah. if you mobilized uh, uh, Jane, you mobilized uh, Isaac, 
and said you want to advise MSMEs on how to grow their enterprise, they will be so happy to work with you because those are their customers. And in that process, they begin to trust um, KRA and they begin to change the environment. Actually, you s simply raise the number beyond what you are seeing now. Now, can we, can we, yes, may, Jane, Jane and. Uh, So I want to go back to the salon. I'm not sure it's expensive actually to get those people. They use chemicals they buy from somebody. They have a license from a county council or a governor. They are on the street that we know where it is. There's an address, there's a telephone number, there's an M-Pesa number. If we really wanted to expand the tax base, we can. And I think the challenge is to Stephen's comment, do we really want to? And we have the right people trying to think about that but I think we can. And I think between me and Stephen, we are kind of uh, feeling a lot of weight. Yeah. So we need a lot more people. They need a lot more questions now. No. <laughs> yeah. Isaac, you had some. Okay, can, can, we, can we direct a few questions to, you know, you can't have these brains here, you leave them go, and you are harassing, no, not harassing you. <laughs> can we have at least this round? then we can come the other round to, to KRA. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Damakrin. I'm from KRA. My question goes to Stephen from Safaricom. And I'd like to borrow from what Jen has just said, that we could leverage on the data, MPESA data, to increase the tax base. My question is to Steve. I'm glad that you realize that the situation is there that we have 4 million taxpayers paying taxes, yet we have such a big number that we could tap into. What role are you playing as Safaricom? And why is it so difficult to collaborate with Safaricom when it comes to data sharing? I'm glad that we're talking about predictive analytics and artificial intelligence, but apart from paying taxes as Safaricom, as one of the top taxpayers in the country, what role are you playing to enable KRA um, collect more revenue, which increases the domestic revenue? And I'd just like to point out that in other countries, our neighboring countries, Rwanda, for instance, and Uganda, they're able to get data from any third party that they'd like to, and unfortunately, we're not where we'd like to be when it comes to voluntary compliance. So what, what is your role in supporting Kerry? Okay. Right. It is burning him. Let him answer the question. <laughs> I've uh, asked Prof if I could answer that straight away. Damakrin, I think we need to be very, very, very careful and very fair um, in how we approach this issue so that we do not position anyone as a gatekeeper uh, who is not allowing uh, one other person to achieve what they need to achieve. We don't have all the data in this country. We have some data. We are actually helping KRA to a great extent. We have taken you to the doors of all these people who are doing businesses and told you they are here. All our pay bill numbers are there. We are regulated by the uh, CA. The CA and the uh, KRA are sister agencies. CA can, and, and Central Bank of Kenya, for that matter, can say Safaricom has a million pay bill numbers or a million Lipa na M-Pesa numbers. Those numbers are there. Those are people who already we have made possible for KRA to go and say, if you are transacting one million in your Lipa na M-Pesa, really you should be declaring taxes at least for one million. Of course, other people will have paid in cash. We have positioned those people for you to be able to actually go to them and you know, get them to, uh, to, to be compliant. The thing is, which I said, and I think um, Commissioner has agreed with me, with the right legislative framework, nothing would prevent us or any organization in this country from providing the government with the right information they need for you to be able to have you know, the kind of uh, information you have. But the way it is right now, and it has been admitted um, here, we don't have that level of uh, clarity in our legislation. If it was there, 
you would have, you know, we, we like complying. We are the number one taxpayer and have been for many years. So we'll also be the first one to comply with whatever legislation that is passed. So if that was the case, we would be able to cross that bridge and provide that additional more information. Apart from that, Safaricom is a prime mover. We have the largest number of suppliers and all of these people cannot supply for Safaricom unless they have a tax clearance certificate and they have a record of paying taxes. So apart from our own compliance, we're increasing that ring of compliance to the people who work with us. And we have to make sure that they pay their taxes, they pay their payee, or else they fall off our supply chain. And that really increases the ripple effect of the people we are bringing um, to the basket for KRA to address. In okay. addition to that, uh, you have a lot of spending data which you could begin to do analytics around. If you listen to Jane, she said uh, they buy product, chemicals, whatnot. With, it's very easy to get their income. I mean, their sales, very easy. Or you talk to Kamal, he knows how to mix those things. And no, no, I was just going to, uh, to augment uh, oh, yeah. uh, the comment around uh, focusing on Safaricom and actually push the focus to something you talked about, uh, data management <coughs> and data analytics, because the information is there. And I think that uh, if you go to the core of uh, the baseline information, in the case of Safaricom, using uh, <coughs> Lipa and M-Pesa, information which I think is available you can you can you can basically access you can uh, <coughs> triangulate this data backwards and forwards and look use other information available uh, from uh, other economic activities <coughs> to actually begin improving uh, your collection uh, the, your bill to collect so I think that uh, my view is a focus should be on the broader policy framework and a law which is applicable to everybody, not a law which targets a specific institution. That, in my view, would not be acceptable to say that we want, we want to target Safaricom because they have got 28 million uh, uh, customers. We should put in a law which is applicable equally to everybody. Can, he wants to clap for him. Yeah. Let's take the last set of questions now to anybody seated in front here. There's one question. There's a gentleman yeah. there who has been, oh yeah, and said. Hello, um, my name is Wandera. I'm the Secretary General for Kenya Cultural Center Association of Artists. And uh, my question goes to Mr. Stephen of Safaricom. Supposing uh, the taxman or uh, the KRA had uh, tax incentives uh, towards you for you to create a platform for actors and, and a creative economy to thrive in what sense creation of uh, content to be carried on your platform to reach millions of your customers will you be willing to create a platform for such content to be distributed and you not being uh, being exempt you being exempted from tax but KRA now exempting that tax on you but still to be charged the same tax on the consumers ahead. Are you willing to create the platform for that content, reach those customers? Thank you. Yes. Okay, thanks, Wandera. Um, you know, we are doing some of this, and uh, maybe I, we're not understanding each other, but we're doing some of this. Let me explain to you what we are doing. We've created a platform called Skiza. Skiza is for music uh, artists. So we've got producers, composers, and uh, the actual songwriters. And what we've done is created a platform whereby they just need to sing a song, and then it is made into a digital format, and it is put on our platform. And because of that, and I know KRA is here, so I'm pointing them in a different direction to Damakrin's point, we are paying close to 150 million shillings a month to different artists in this country because of such a platform. So it's there, it's working. Uh, if we earn anything from that, it is taxed on us in the normal way through our corporation tax. But those people become people who are now capable of being taxed because they're earning a good income. And that platform is there, it's been there for 
uh, for seven years. We keep on improving its capabilities, and of course, we keep on uh, increasing it, uh, awareness around it. And it earns a lot of artists a very good, decent return uh, every month. So if it's such a platform for maybe audiovisual, that is something we can consider, but it goes with what the market wants to take. But it's something we have done, and you know, I'd be willing to uh, take up the discussion beyond this. Two questions, then we... One lady, one man. I'm Yaribo Duncan, data science student from the University of Nairobi. And I'm asking uh, a question to Madam Beatrice. How do you use statistical tools, techniques, and models in forecast and enhancement of optimal revenue collection and uh, compliance? Okay, Thank you. Okay. There's another question at the back over there. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Arnold Gekonge. I'm a youth champion for sustainable development. And partnerships in tax training has been spoken about by Dr. Bitange and Ms. Elizabeth. So I'd like to ask, what is the progress in tax education in cooperation in existing curriculum, such as the CBC? And how can comprehensive tax education, let's call it CTE, how can it be availed to many citizens as possible for those who cannot afford Kestra or be able to use iTax and other mobile platforms that are coming up. Because without information and knowledge, very little can be achieved. And this is in line with sustainable development goal number four, which is quality education for all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, I'm forgiving Kiara A and going to uh, Mr. Kamal. I was intrigued by Mr. Kamal's response when you, told, you asked him a question on how he should advise which is the proper taxation regime for a company such as what he runs. And his response was, if I will paraphrase, that if you, since he's a Kenyan company, is being over-targeted by KRA as opposed to his competitors. And the, the answer to his response, which I wish to provide, is that uh, as part of his market research, he should consider finding out who, where are the actual origins of his competitors. And Professor, if you allow me to link this response to the early morning session, where the commissioner corporate, uh, corporate business was, business, business policy was asked if taxation of digital platforms won't create a double taxation. And he said they are looking at expanding the scope of double taxation treaties to avoid our taxation agreement. And our experience as Tax Justice Network Africa has been that these treaties do not, do not necessarily create, do not necessarily avoid double taxation, they create double non-taxation. So Mr. Kumali may find that some of the companies you're competing with are originating from countries which have double taxation agreements with KRA or Kenya government, and they are also kind of tax havens. And for you, a Kenyan company who is paying the full burden of the tax, I submit. Okay. So the, la the last was meant for any lady in Professor, the room. Professor, there's a question here I've been slipped through to me from a lady. She wants to remain anonymous. So am I allowed to read it out? It goes out to Kraft Silicon. <laughs> she <laughs> says, what would you change if you are KRA and how would you do it? Okay. Yeah. Now, with... Uh, Beatrice, starting with Duncan's question, then if uh, Madam Commissioner wants to add, well and good, okay. then we would have, um, yeah, Madam Commissioner can answer partnership in tax training, and uh, Kamal, you have two questions. Okay, so the question in, is on how we're using predictive analytics to optimize revenue collection. And, uh, uh, my response to this is that um, I had already indicated that this is a project or an initiative that is at very formative stages, S but I'll talk about our thinking. So our thinking is that we are able to use predictive analytics to be able to um, inform KRA in adopting a risk-based compliance approach so that as KRA um, does its risk management, we 
choose the cases based on the risk. We, 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 we pick on taxpayers who are at high risk, and we have nothing to do with the more compliant taxpayers. So there's the risk-based um, compliance, but you're also talking about uh, fraud detection. We are talking about using this to expand our tax base so that you're able to know who to recruit into the tax base, who is not paying what they should be paying. So we are thinking of using or, or, I mean, the, our advanced analytics to do all this. And we're also doing some bit of uh, taxpayer segmentation. So this is a project that is ongoing. So we want to be able to use data that is coming through our customer relationship management system, our CRM system, to be able to understand our customers, to be able to design their uh, tax, uh, the taxpayers' education program. So this is a project that is ongoing. And the alternatives, I mean, the, 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 the alternatives for use of advanced analytics, all data for uh, optimizing our revenue collection are limitless. So that is what um, maybe my response to this is. But even as we do that, I just want to say that due to the large uh, volumes of data that we have, one of the things we are doing in the background is that we have a data management or a data governance pro pro program that is going on because we realize that we have to ensure that we have data that is of the right quality, data that is accessible, and data that is well managed. We have to be able to, uh, to, to align ourselves to the, to, to the registration and the, uh, the, the requirements of the law. So there's so much that is happening in the background that, that is supporting this. So maybe the next, um, in, the, in the next summit to be able to talk about some of the results that we have from these analytics that you're doing. Madam Commissioner, yes. Thank you. Just to add on, uh, before I go to uh, partnership uh, in tax training, uh, I'd like to add on uh, tax base expansion because I've seen it's a thorny issue where the existing taxpayers that feel that care is just looking at them and taxing them, we are like milking the same cow. The cow is now tired. So what I uh, want to say is that the plan we have in place on uh, base expansion is that we are now focused on targeting the informal sector. And uh, the informal sector, we are looking at collaboration actually with the counties, which we have started. And on uh, collaboration with counties, we are still going to rely on data, but data on the single business permit. So anybody with single business permit will be taxed. Mr. Ray talked about it in the morning. And uh, that will be under the presumptive tax in uh, January. And also, we are bringing back the TOT, the turnover tax. So come January, we are going to actually look at some of these areas that actually people feel they are not paying their taxes. We are going to bring them to the net. And uh, the main approach we are taking is to identify, incubate, and release. We identify them first, we incubate. Incubating means we handhold them such that we feel uh, we ensure that they are aware of their tax obligations. After that, we now release them to go and comply. Then uh, the next question was on partnerships in tax training. What if, what is the status of education, especially if somebody is not able to use the tools we have? So what under sustainable development goal number four, I think that is what he said. So. KRA, we have got an elaborate way of educating our taxpayers such that they become aware of our tax laws. So we have e-learning, as I said in the morning. Dr. Mugambi there is actually doing a very, very good job at the training school. So we have come up with an e-learning portal where somebody can just apply, you register, and you'll be trained. Then uh, we are also trying as much as we possible such that we avail a lot of information on tax literature such that there is accessibility to information that should actually enhance the literacy level of most of our taxpayers. Come on. So I was not very clear, doctor, on no, the if, uh, if you are given the seat where Madam is seated, what would you do with respect to taxing, tax hailing systems? And the other question was, uh, yeah, actually, the tax, tax hailing. The other one was like a comment around what has been happening. But what can you do? How can we tax you? How can the government tax you? So if I'm sitting on her chair, I would say the 
Don't charge me tax. <laughs> okay, that was on a lighter side. I think what we uh, want uh, uh, is, is a firm clarity on what to do. I think whichever side we want to do, we are willing, we want to be on the right side of the world, but at least let there be clarity because when there is no clarity and no level playing field, it becomes very difficult for companies like… We also want to be the Facebook of this world. We also want to be the Googles of this world coming out of Kenya. But if the local, uh, you know, if the people in the country do would, not support… Would, would the payment come from the taxi driver or would it come from you or, or you would say this is the total KRA? You chop it the way the person pays, pays yours, pays taxi, pays carry. Okay, in our view, I think that the tax must come from the end user who is taking the service, which is now the riders. And yourself? Of us, when we collect that on behalf of from the rider, we would just like VAT, we will remit them to carry. That is, I think for us, that makes a lot of sense and gives us some clarity. Okay, one word from Jane Isaac, then coming this way, to say bye or to say this or whatever, just... Uh, that, okay, that's a tough one, but I think uh, if I was scary, maybe I'll take that. I'll just do what Mrs. Mayo is saying, really expand the tax base. I think there is enough money in this country to run our, our country, if we did the right thing. Thank you. Isaac. I think I've heard the word collaboration very many times. And I think that uh, the opportunity we have as private business, as uh, KRA, as government, is to basically take nothing for granted. Uh, collaborate, collaborate a lot, and uh, through that you find that uh, ideas which help us improve uh, tax collection which actually will actually come through. We all want the same thing for this country. And so if we collaborate, I believe we can get there. I'm a Kwaheri, I'm a Karibu. I'm a now, now that I am caring, <laughs> what, what, what I'd like to appeal to my colleagues is that we should have a steady private public partnership such that um, ideas that make Safaricom be outstanding, we can share in a more collaborative way. The ideas from Mr. Kamal, we can share. The banks, Ms. Dr. Wondo, and EABL. In fact, from here I've picked a lot, and I think by tomorrow I'll be able to have quite a number of taxpayers already recruited, because I have information that I can recruit from Safaricom without actually offending him by asking him about some data where he feels there's confidentiality. I believe I can talk to my brother here also to change uh, his belief that it's the final consumer who should pay the taxes so that I appoint him as a withholding agent for tax purposes and the banks also to help with the information, especially on the small taxpayers, such that that collaboration helps with the recruitment of taxpayers. So I think my appeal to everybody is that let us work as one, the country is ours, and uh, if there are issues you feel the Revenue Authority needs to address, please don't talk about them in the streets. Just come to our offices. We are very, very good people. We will assist you and we will move forward. Thank you so much. Come on. Do you have any... Nothing, Beatrice? So, uh, we, we endeavor going forward to continuously scan the environment and keep up uh, with, with the margin threads for purposes of ensuring that um, we are using data to enhance KRA's business outcomes. But apart from that, we'd also wish to be able to make it easier for the taxpayers to pay their taxes. So it's for, for purposes of uh, benefits of both the KRA and the taxpayers. Steve. Um, for me, I'll repeat uh, our mantra, technology can do great things. So I would still encourage KRA to continue on the journey of um, digitizing. Let's get it to a stage where I can wake up in the morning, take my phone out, pay a tax, and forget about it. If you get it to that level, just know you're speaking to the customer. That's what we try and do, and there's a lot of success in um, 
um, in, in, in doing that. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is with the right uh, regulatory framework, I think everyone will come to the party and do what they're supposed to do. So let's uh, address that other issue. Let's even have a consultative session like this, even with the AG people, so that we can have Kenyans feeling that all of us are required and obligated to pay tax, not those few people who are there who pay tax for all of us. Thank you. My name is to thank everybody in front here to thank the listeners who have kept quiet all through. Um, I'm only going to say, Madam, that we finished a report uh, for emerging technologies. We would seek for an opportunity to present it because we specifically made recommendations on how to raise taxes, uh, leveraging these new technologies. So, asante sana to everybody, and I wish you every Good, everything. Good. <laughs> All right, round of applause for our able panelists and the moderator, Sante Sana. Thank you so much. It's my humble request for the panelists to just line up over here. We want to take a quick picture. Essentially, you know, they say in God we trust everybody else. You must bring data and a tax compliance certificate. So we want to take a picture here to show that this even happened to begin with just a straight line here. Yes, straight line, Tafadali, including the moderator as well. All the panelists as well, just for a quick photo session. Asanteni sana. So we appreciate each and every one of you for speaking out their mind. We are taking it very seriously. A round of applause for yourselves for coming and being.